Grace to and peace from God our Creator and Christ our Redeemer. We live in an age of everyday miracles. If you have ever spent time in a hospital or had loved ones spend time in a hospital, then you know the miraculous and marvelous things which modern medicine is capable of. We are able to heal injuries and cure illnesses that would have once been a death sentence. And we have actually eradicated diseases that have haunted humanity for millennia. Yet, there is something enormously appealing about healing stories in the Bible. They, they speak to the fear and exhaustion of having our lives controlled, shaped, even destroyed by disease and chronic illness. When modern medicine fails for all of its miracles and is unable to help us no more, we long for the ancient promise of healing. When all else has failed, we still hope to be set free. In the first 20 verses of Mark, Jesus bursts onto the scene where he is baptized by John, tempted into the wilderness, and calls his first disciples. In the next 20 verses, which we begin this morning in our reading, Jesus begins his public ministry with a series of healings. Immediately, crowds begin to gather around him. Word about his healing spreads like wildfire through the countryside, responding to that same primal desire for healing that we all know so well. People began seeking out Jesus. They were longing for wholeness. They were longing for hope. But what does it mean to be healed? At one level, I recognize that sounds like a stupid question. After all, when you're sick, being healed means that you're no longer sick. When you're struggling with chronic disease, being healed means that you are cured. But at a deeper level, being healed means more than just a cure. When we are sick, our sickness comes with a stigma. It can be as simple and as harmless as having other people avoid you when you have a cold, but it quickly escalates from there. When you have cancer, people can avoid you because they are scared, because they are unsure of how to react, because they don't know what to say. Other diseases come with a whole set of social judgments. If you suffer from these diseases, the general social opinion is that you suffer them because of some moral or lifestyle shortcoming, whether it's HIV or AIDS, addiction, mental illness, even something as innocuous as diabetes. They all come with varying degrees of social judgment. They all induce varying degrees of shame. Our illnesses Our diseases, our brokenness, isolate us. They cause us to become separated from one another, either out of a desire to hide or because we become cast out by our communities, our friends, even our families. Therefore, at a deeper level, being healed is about having the stain of stigma wiped away. Being healed is about being made whole, not just in body, but in the eyes of ourselves and of others. Being healed is about once again finding our place in the world. It is about once again belonging. But even that, even that, does not capture the fullness of what it means to be healed. To understand it, we need to look back to how our gospel reading begins this morning. Mark chooses to preface it preface Jesus' healing escapades with a teaching in the temple. Before he does anything else, Jesus preaches. What's more, all who hear him are amazed, for he speaks with great authority. Authority. It's not a reference to the tone of voice that Jesus used. It's not about the firmness of his handshake or how tall he stood or, or the way he dressed. Jesus' authority had nothing to do with how smart or clever he sounded or how many credentials he had to his name. 
the authority with which Jesus spoke, the authority to which the people were responding, was his capacity to effect change. Jesus' authority was not so much in the words that he spoke as it was that the words he spoke were true and they changed the world. I can speak a great many things, but that does not mean that they will happen, nor does it mean that the things I say will have any impact on the world around me, because I do not have that authority. By contrast, there are many things in my life that do have authority over me. There are many things that can and do shape my life and my world. Some of them are good, such as my relationship with Matt, or the role that the church plays in my life or work. Some of them are a bit innocuous, like the government. Sure, I have to pay taxes and live by the laws of the land, but in return, in return I enjoy a great deal of safety and the benefit of our common resources and services. But others, others are bad. These are the things in our lives that make a claim on us. They shape our world and our reality in ways that hurt and diminish us. They can be abusive relationships, poverty, racism, sexism, really all of the isms. They can be drugs, alcohol, mental illness, even disease. Jesus' authority stands in contrast and opposition to the authority of these many things in our lives and in our world that try to make an assertion on our lives. At its deepest level, being healed is to be set free from all of the things that have a claim over us. Being healed means being released from all the authorities that separate us from one another and from God. Being released from all the authorities that threaten to destroy us. For in the end, only God has authority over us. The good news of the scripture this morning is that Jesus comes to heal us. Jesus comes to set us free from all the things which have authority over us. The good news is that in Jesus, we are reminded that God alone has a claim on us. Now, if that sounds a little bit familiar, it should, for it is simply another way of stating the first commandment, that the Lord alone is our God and that we shall have no other gods over us. And through the lens of Jesus' ministry, it's revealed to us that this first commandment is also a promise. It is a promise that God made with us, and with our ancestors, all those many years ago. It's a promise that Yahweh will be our God, and we will be God's people. Here at the start of his ministry, Jesus is keeping that promise. Here at the start of his ministry, Jesus is demonstrating that he came not to break with tradition or the history of God's people, but that he comes as a continuation of that ancient story and as its fulfillment.